It's hard to say why they're different. I just know they are. I don't know that any sentence can do them justice. Maybe world beaters. When I saw the quality of what they did, you know, I called my wife and said, these kids are doing some wonderful things. Let's encourage them. There's somebody who was like six or eight or something, and then the oldest was like, and then they all appear in their films, they all, and everything was done in house. Look, that's a magical story. Young men and women, we sort of looked around and said, yeah, we can do that. He wasn't just coming and give me money. They had things to show for it. This is what we've done with limited resources. Imagine what we can do if we haven't. It's just such a great story. And then everything that has happened to them and for them after that was ordained. Our camera is all set up, but we can't do anything. That's yes. a problem, a big yes. problem. But we cannot shoot okay. because the electricity here is bad. We have to wait for five hours and before we can begin shooting. Peace out. Really? Interview, take one, A mark. Yep, and action. <sighs> Let's do it. Let's go, let's go, let's go with the move. Come on! Oh yeah, so far so good. Where am I? Please help me. Looking at the film scene, the whole film scene, really, like in Nigeria specifically, which is like, of course, the industry, in Hollywood, <clears throat> it's rare to actually find you um, a collective of filmmakers. You can easily find a collective of musicians who come together to do music, right? But you can't find people who come together with a common, um, a common goal of just creating films. So it's very rare. Godwin and Victor, they are our cousins, so sometimes they and their mom will come visit us. Yeah, so that day, for the first time, they came to our house, and like, we well, have never met these young lads before. <laughs> yeah, from there, 
all the children go one side and go and hang out while the parents and adults will have their conversation. So that is the way it is. So uh, if I remember clearly, we were just, um, we're talking about films. Yeah, that's it. We're talking about films. And I think um, because we had this Nokia C2 phones that time, yeah, so I think Raymond was like showing they are going doing that, this post and play effect that one of our friends actually showed us on the phone. And like, I think that's where like all the film conversation started. It, it wasn't actually all films discussion the first time we met and all. And, um, you know, I think for every child in the world, you have this moment where you run around playing characters in your compound or like in your neighborhood and all. But for us, the one extra detail that was in our own story was that we had a phone camera that we were using to record ourselves and we delete right after because we had no idea on what storage meant at that time. So we actually started editing on phone before we moved to editing on the laptop. So there was this um, app on, an, on this Android phone. It's called Viva Video. So that was where the editing process started. We started editing on Viva Video before we moved to editing on like video pad on like a computer and stuff. So uh, the information, I think, is just Google. Though. Just Google how to edit. I don't think we would have reached the height where we are now without the internet. Internet is very expensive in Nigeria. We all know that. So there was this cheap subscription plan that was like everywhere that time. But then, instead of using 3G network, the, the plan only works for like 2G network. Raymond will just like con convince our dad to do the subscription plan on his SIM. And like he'll tell our dad that he's going to use the data to like download some things for my dad's workshop. But then, you know, we still have side, side plans. So like, it was very slow, 2G network. It was very slow, especially when you're using it on like a computer. It's extremely slow and you're like trying to download a software of like 300 MB. Nah, it takes like forever. And like we'll be waiting and be watching it for like six hours and like it will just be downloading. So like that was how we downloaded some um, softwares. And let's just say some of them are not legit. <laughs> Yeah. So friend video call. Like you might have heard, we were around the house shooting um, epic films. Where am I? That were epic in our head. I wish we had those footages Stay presently, back. so I'll see how stupid we look at Stay that back. time. Help me, please. Help me. I will shoot you. What are you? Help me, please help me. Don't come closer. Please help me. Stay back. Stay back. I mean it. I will shoot you right now. So I went first of all to their Twitter page and I saw that they'd be tweeting at so many people. And it was kids and it was like, oh, please, um, they're trying to buy equipment, look at our work. And I think there was a link to their work. And one of the things that I respected about that tweet to me was, they didn't go, oh, yes, we want to work. Give us work or give us money. You know, what they did was they put a link there that if it catches your attention, where you can actually see things that we've done with very limited resources. And then I clicked on the link and I was just like, what in the world is going on here? Here, here's a bunch of young people who've seen the same movies that everybody else has, who have less tools than most of the people in the US for sure, but have taken the tools at their disposal, studied the form that they want to, uh, to sort of make work in and sort of have made no excuses for it not being the highest possible quality. See my people for Supreme. I was the 14th, no, not, um, I was the 20th. Initially, we thought it was child's play. You know, all of them, when their cousins comes around, they will, all of them, they will be in that room talking, criticizing, and laughing at the other films, the, at least, especially the local films in Nigeria and some of the international films. We always hear them audibly arguing about films and all this. And eventually, they will come up 
run, running around the compound with their with clothes on their head that they are making films. It was just like that. So initially, initially our parents didn't really go well with you, or they were not really focused on what we were doing. They did not just really care like that. Like everybody was opposing this, this stuff for some reason. I don't know. There was just this conflict there. I think I took um, this attitude from my dad. I, I don't know. But my dad has not really shown support. Doesn't really mean he tells me not to do it, right? But he just shows the support of like, he doesn't care. Right, it's more like, do your thing. I don't give up. <laughs> Being a child, growing up in a house where a lot of people expected me to be a medical doctor, I was not given the chance to show that, oh, well, this is what I like. Oh. In fact, the time that I swallowed up the courage to say this is what I want to become, I was stagged, confused. You know, in the African setting, most especially in Nigeria, uh, most parents believe that a child that does not go to school cannot make it in life. We grew up to, to believe that without education, you cannot go anywhere. It also follows some scolding, some fighting, some argument when they are taking it too far. I mean, according to our own judgment, because we wouldn't want anything that would jeopardize their education. We are always amaring on that education. Things that have been said to me can make a man lose his soul. Uh, I knew that the passion for filmmaking that uh, has brought these children to this level uh, is going to really affect them because you can't put uh, two eggs in one basket. You know, you have to take one. You either take the critics company, where your passion is, where you derive joy and peace, or you go for the education where you don't derive joy in it. Initially, it didn't go, it didn't go well with us. It really didn't go well with us. When <laughs> an undergraduate suddenly opted out for filmmaking. It was very tough for us to support him on that line, leaving his education for what he's doing. Their father will be asking them, this film, this uh, video that you're always doing, where are the films there? You are the, come and show us. Let's even see what you are, you, are, you are doing. And when we saw the film, the, when they begin to show us, one after the other, some of these films that they are doing, with ah, talk. Anyway, you are trying. Just keep on with what you are doing. And they're like watching our shots here. And they're like, you try. You try. <laughs> 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 to be honest, but that was not what I expected. I thought that possibly when we showed them that short film bar, the way they would hold us, the eye regard would go from like this to like this. But that took like, I think it took like almost two years for that. At times we get angry with them. Because the passion was too much, in the night, 2 a.m. in the night, Raymond would still be on the computer saying that he wants to render. What are you rendering? What are you rendering? Short, short film, what are you rendering? For two hours, I mean, till 2 a.m. in the night. What's the biggest shocker for you in this journey of you getting recognized? Come on, man. Man, a lot of things, oh. a lot of things, man. Starting from when you randomly get an inbox from Kemi Aditiba to like having a Zoom call with JJ Abrams. I know when you think about this, you'll be like, oh, these people have worked with these people, and I've worked with these people. Like, I mean, JJ Abrams has directed Tom Cruise, man. Like, they, they were like this. So that means I have kind of related to Tom Cruise in a way. <laughs> <laughs> Franklin Leonard sent us a message. Hey, I'm Franklin Leonard. You can Google me. I'm actually very legit. We actually had a video call with him, a Skype video call. We were able to actually see him for the very first time I actually talked to him. And then Franklin gave us lots of advice. He gives us, gave us a lot of things. When, when at long last, sort of, there was the arrival of the stuff that J.J. Abrams sent over, right? Like all this equipment. And, you know, 
sort of in my sort of uncle period of my life, I wanted to make sure that they, you know, thanked JJ for the gift. So I sent them a direct message, like just, I know you guys are probably already thinking about it, but just be sure to like do a public thank you uh, for, this, for the gift. And they were like, yeah, 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 we're already on it. And I remember thinking, what does that mean we're already on it? Like how long does it take to, to tweet? Thank you. Uh, and sure enough, less than 12 hours later, they dropped a short film about the receipt of the equipment that involved visual effects. Um, that's what I mean by true filmmakers, is they take a moment like that and they turn it into a short film. So my mom is actually no more. She passed away in the year 2017. And cut down to 2019, 2020, we're having all this good stuff come our way. In some, some way it has been exciting for me personally, but also feels like, you know, when you kind of watch a film and you feel like, there's a better way this film could have gone right. So that's my life right now. I feel like there's a better way this could have gone. I'm actually very, very appreciative of like what I have presently, what I've been able to accomplish with my brothers, what I've been able to get, or the position I've been able to get to so far. But like I feel obviously it could have gone way, way better. And things could have gone way, way better. And probably some things would not be the way they are, like personally. My parents began to accept um, us as filmmakers ever since, ever since we sort of proved to them that something good can come out of this. Although when we were starting, I was not uh, impressed with them. I was not, my mind was not with them. It was later on, I found out the way they are picking up their um, acting, I found out, yes, they are good and they are great. When you show success, it inspires somebody else to be able to, to go, oh, maybe I can go into it. Not only that, it also, allows whomever is their guardian, a parent or whatever, to say, I agree that this is a worthwhile uh, uh, occupation for you to, 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 to go into. For now, he's, he's living it for what he's doing. 
be, and we are in support of it simply because we know that what he is doing is on the right path, is his, is his way, is his passion, is his vision, is his call. So that is why we have to eventually swallow the bitter pill and give him the hundred support that he needs. No, it's okay. It's okay from their point, they are going to a new world to learn more from themselves, to become their own, the owner of themselves. It's okay. They have learned a lot from me and I wanted to put it in practice that they are on their own. I discovered they have very strong passion for it and uh, they are at peace doing it. And at the same time, you know, at, from one film to another, I saw progress in their work. So these are parameters for you to know you know what a child is destined for. They spend even a little money they you know collect from you know, receive from friends and uh, families. They, they spend that money to buy their film gadgets. You saw my laptop and uh, he was doing some typing work in the house and gradually you know he fell in love into uh, the VFX effects that uh, he's doing today. And uh, he told me, Daddy, I want to have this laptop. I said, okay, now you can have the laptop. A lot of dreams are coming true, if you understand what I mean, especially dreams for the industry. So there was a time where it's our films and it's their films and everything was just so separated. They, you know, look, when I, when I entered the film industry 20 years ago, if I had wanted to make a short film, I would have needed to either rent or buy equipment. I would have needed to have probably gone to film school to get access in, in an easy way to some of that equipment. Um, you know, fast forward 20 years from my university graduation, we have a situation where a bunch of kids in rural Nigeria can hop on the internet, learn how to make material, take technology that is easily available to, to even them in their hands daily, um, make work, market that work to a truly global audience so that Reuters found them and then Reuters amplified it on Twitter where I found it, an, a Los Angelino who was current, and in London at that moment, and I retweeted it and was connected with them directly within less than an hour. That's not possible without technology. I don't think that any individual part of it is even possible without technology. And I think we are in the earliest days of things like this. And I'm very excited to find out what, what comes of it, mainly because of having met them. It's only the guy that he's missing. He's invisible. He's invisible. I don't even know which camera I'm supposed to be showing. Just stand here. This is your guy. Want to continue an action? Very good. Please. Stop. Please. Please. No. 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 Uh, cut. 